Hi guys, my name is Tom Antos and I'm here today with my brother Lucas. Hello. Uh, and uh, this video is about the Panasonic G85. So yeah. we got it right here. Yeah, it's a new, uh, new addition to the Lumix line and uh, I think it falls in somewhere between G7 and uh, GH4 or GH5 yeah. now that's coming out. I mean, to me mainly I, I kind of got it as a, as a B camera to my GH4, which is my, my favorite, like kind of a little small portable camera. Uh, for you know basically projects when you know especially like, like right now where we're traveling and where we don't want to take too much camera gear so I love my GH4 for that and I wanted to have another camera that kind of matches the quality has the 4k uh, accepts the same lenses so it has the same mount you know yet is a lot cheaper right so this one retails for how much right now a thousand dollars whereas now GH4 has come down in price so it's 1200 but that's body only whereas for a thousand you get with the stock lens uh, and yeah. the G85 but yeah, like main main thing like the, the, the and, and I think also actually yeah. before we go move forward, I mean, now the G uh, GH5 is coming out. I think this actually would be a, a kind of a I would consider it a sort of a B camera for the G GH5, which is going to be two thousand dollars. So it's a big price yeah. difference. Uh, but it also has the internal 4K and all that stuff. Obviously, it doesn't have some of the advanced features that uh, both the GH5 or GH4 have. So, like, um, I think the main point about you know uh, when it comes to our review review of this camera is that it's a camera that's very similar to GH4. So, and in GH4, you know, it's, it's it's been a very popular camera. Yeah. And and so right away you can say you can feel confident that that this camera is you know is a is a good, very good camera. But we'll, so we'll just focus basically on what are the dif differences between those two cameras and you know, from the perspective of a, of a filmmaker, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the price was one, so we talked about it. The battery, the GH4, you know, is well known for long battery. Long battery. So this one has a smaller battery. Now we've got like, we, you know, we, we, have to, we work with, with three batteries when using this camera. Like one, um, the Panasonic, you know, original battery, I think it will last two and a half, three hours, something mm. like that. So, I mean, I've never used more than two batteries really in a day, but you can go through three batteries. So I think if, you, if you, you've got three batteries, you're, you're, you're good, good for most situations. Yeah, yeah, I don't, you know, so, and, uh, and then those non-Panasonic non batteries are affordable. You get yeah. them on Amazon, so really you can have, uh, you can be, you know, that battery life is not something I would be worried about. Yeah. You just might have to change them a bit more often. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing that this camera is missing uh, is the headphone jack. So the GH4 has, you know, has the mic and the headphone jack. So that's perfect for recording audio in camera, right? Yeah, for monitoring. I mean, this one has mic in. So you mic can, in. You can yeah. monitor the audio, which to me was never a problem, actually. Because uh, even on my GH4, I have the headphone jack, but I, I never use it. I don't know. I've never actually used it. Now, I know for some people it might be an important thing, so something to consider. Yeah, I mean, if you got, you know, an interview that it was really difficult to, to get and you've got, you know, a little bit of, of time with that person, you cannot make mistakes, yeah, you want to yeah. be able to operate the camera and right away monitor uh, the, the audio. audio because, you know, you don't want any, just any mistakes, right? The one thing that I noticed with it is that um, it's kind of, the GH4 has like a more of, a, I would say, a sexy camera design. This one's very similar, like similar size, weight, all that stuff, but it seems kind of squarish, kind of blocky, which yeah. some people like that. I, I like liked, I like I the like one that the GH4 is just kind of uh, smoother, rounder, and it feels a little nicer in my hands than this camera. But not to say that this one is uncomfortable to work with, it's just... For me, personally, it's the perfect size. The only thing I don't like is the, like the button here, the recording button, yeah. is, it's too small. So, but the good thing is you can use the, just the shutter button for recording video, not just for photos. So And you can customize buttons too, right? You can customize yeah. it. And otherwise, I think it's pretty much like the same kind of, a, you know, as many buttons here, uh, if I think as five function. Yeah five function buttons so and, and it has like the menu system if you're comfortable uh, using the gh4 uh then uh, you're gonna same, you, right? you, it's i mean it's similar. identical yeah so so that's and it's a good system it's not exactly. a, it's not just similar it's good it's a good system yeah, exactly you know canon like has a good sony system one. but sony <laughs> no yeah like so like the 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 menu system is like and that, that's why i would say if you own the gh4 or gh5 and you want to get a b camera that's cheaper more affordable but still has decent 4K, you know, mm -hmm. video. Then I think that's why this will be a great camera because you can have also yeah, identical image yeah. profiles. The GH4 and this camera has identical image profiles. Mm -hmm. You can have the same settings, all that stuff. So you can basically get, you know, we would say almost identical image, you know, from both cameras. Easy to man you know, maneuver through the menus because they're identical. Yeah. So there's, you know, accessories like lenses. You can swap them back and forth. Um, yeah. You said, sorry, you said decent um, 4K video. 4K video. 
Yeah, I mean, well, it, yeah, yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm saying comparing it to like to the cinema cameras, yeah, like yeah. like Red Epic or you know the Black Magic, for example, the the Ursas or cameras that record raw. Obviously, yeah. this still isn't you know doesn't do that. Uh, but it know. still provides really nice but, yeah. crisp crisp 4K and yeah. also gives you. Now and the actually, file sizes are not as big, which exactly. Makes it, so I, I would say for especially yeah. for somebody who's like an indie filmmaker who cannot afford to have huge hard drives and really powerful video editing system, and you know that can handle big 4K files, let's say from like a red camera or something, I would even say that's a big thing to consider and 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 look into a camera like this or the GH4, GH5 because it, uh, it records on SD cards. Cheap media. Um, you, you, the file sizes are you know easy to work with. You, I mean, I can edit it on my laptop, no problem. Uh, so it's just even like an old, older lap laptop. So it's not just uh, the savings in, the, in yeah. terms of the the, the post, you know, the, your computer and, and so on, but also it's quicker to work with. Yeah, right? that, that's a big and thing. something to I'll, I'll tell you guys, like quality-wise, yeah, maybe not. You know, you don't have to that little bit of extra on the top there when you're comparing it to, to top cinema cameras. But uh, I use, for example, the GH4 on a feature film. And it, you know, worked beautifully. You know, and shot multiple like short film pr projects on it. Uh, and this camera, having done all the tests now with it, and we've done actually some sort of like a little cinematic test in uh, this parallel scene, so you can you guys can see the the, the quality difference. You, I'll tell you that both this or the GH4, uh, they they are basically the quality is is enough of a quality, or I would say even even more than enough. Uh, then, then you need to tell a really beautiful and, and good story, right? So really, after, I mean, it just really comes down to, if, you, if you're a filmmaker, uh, you should worry more about your script than whether the camera can, can uh, is good enough quality to, to tell your story. Because it's, you know, nice dynamic range, beautiful color reproduction, amazing 4K, and, and the sharpness and everything. Do you want to talk about actually the uh, color reproduction and in terms of, uh, in compare it to GH4? To, yeah, so now comparing it to GH4 or GH5 for that matter, uh, the, the only, I would say, disadvantage of this camera is that it only records basically internally. Now you can have the HDMI out, but it does not put basically uncompressed or like higher bit rate. Uh, does it H give, yeah, uh, does uh, it give uh, you more data? More data. data. So it's basically, 8-bit 420. The same um, as GH4. The same thing as, as GH4, which is also the same as the Sony, you know, A7S or A6500, all those cameras. So you can definitely get good quality with that. It's just something to consider that if you want to have the higher bit, you know, bits of colors for like some really heavy grading and things like that, then the the GH4. That's where the advantage of it is because you can uh, internally you cannot record higher bit rate, but you can uh, through the HDMI and external recorder you can record 10 bit 4 to 2. So it gives you that extra bit of you know color depth. And the GH5 will and be able the GH5 to do can do that internally. internally. So it's so that's the e big even up. nicer. That's yeah. like probably going to be the main reason to upgrade to GH5. To the GH5, right? yeah. But for example, you know, if you want to have this, like I said, even as your A camera, you can still do, you know, amazing, beautiful work internally with the 8-bit 420. You just got to know little, little, basically, limitations of, you know, working with, with that, like I would say, that color space. But if, for example, if you've been shooting with Canon 5D, 7D, or any of the Sony, you know, DSLR cameras, they all record an 8-bit 420 color space. And if you're okay with that and you like the colors, you, you're not going to have any problems with this camera. Okay, maybe let's touch on a little bit uh, on the on the low light performance. Now I, I'm saying that quickly because I don't, we I didn't use it too much with in low light because I don't really. I guess my expectations were that the camera is not really best because uh, you know in low light because of the smaller sensor size as compared to us to full frame or maybe even the. Yeah, but I'll, I'll tell you that like me having done tests yeah. with it. I was surprised because I thought the GH4, because maybe because it's more expensive, would be uh, would be better in low light. But is actually, GH4 okay? How is it? It's, in yeah, low light? GH4 is, is is decent. I mean, it's not a low light king, but it's not horrible. I mean, well, comparing lens, it to like, like a cinema it? camera, the GH4 is actually better than Red Epic or right. you know Ursa Mini or things like that. Right. Now you know, like I said, it's not the best. There's some obviously better low light cameras, but GH4 is good. This one's even better. Like it's just. Um, maybe not so much that it's more sensitive that you'll get more of an exposure, but mm -hmm. you you're getting less noise. So it means you can you know go with higher ISOs without you know worrying that your so image is going to degrade. So, so it's like a, a little bit above average camera when it comes to yeah. DSLRs, DSLRs. Yeah, I mean it's it's better than for sure than Canon 5D and you know the 7D or the, the Canon cameras. So okay. So it's 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 I would say it's a pretty good low light. It's not the best basically. That's that's what it is. Now uh, I guess another big difference between this camera and the and the GH4 is the frame rates, basically. So it records still 4K, you know, 30 frames per second or 24, 25, 
uh, in HD you can go uh, up to uh, 60 frames per second. Yeah. So that's the same as you know GH4. The only difference is GH4 also has the variable frame rates, which this one also has it, but only goes up to 60 frames per second basically. Whereas GH4 you can go up to 96 frames per second. So that's or you the can go really slow, right? To two, like yeah, two yeah, yeah, exactly. frames per second. So, so, so that means you can get slow motion, like two and a half times slow motion, if you, you know, if you if you're actually playing, six, yeah. playing in 24 frames per second, like standard film, and shooting 60. So, and it looks beautiful. HD 60 frames per second on this camera looks beautiful, crisp. Uh, but if you want to go get that little bit of extra, you know, frame rates, you know, frames per second. Uh, then the GH4 has that, I would say, that advantage in there. Now, is it a big advantage? I mean, for some people it might be, uh, you know, it's yeah. not that much of a difference in frames. Um, so, and I'll tell you that one thing actually for me is that the GH4 can record in, in 96, but in, when you go up to 60 frames per second on the GH4, the video, HD video looks beautiful, crisp, there's no artifacts. But when you, with the second you go over in 60 frames per second, and once you go up to 96, it's acceptable, but there's a lot more moire and compression artifacts. So actually, that's something to consider that a lot of times on the GH4, I'll just be shooting 60 frames per second. Yeah, we've got two more points I think we should cover because in marketing of this camera, there were Panasonic, I think, was mainly focusing on two differences, like two improvements of this camera versus the G7, for example, which is a cheaper model, also similar to this, or the GH4. And that's the, the autofocus, well, the autofocus and the image stabilization. So, when it comes to the autofocus for video, so continuous autofocus, that's what we were talking about. Because I mean, the Panasonic cameras, Sonic's camera, they have good, fast, uh, you know, autofocus for uh, for photos. Yeah. But for video, but for they, video. they, they like it's continuous. How yeah. is the autofocus for video on? GH4? Yeah, I, I never relied on it. I mean, it's if you have like even like if we're getting a shot like this right now, the two of us sitting, the camera is now moving. It's what I noticed is that it will focus on the face, will recognize the faces, but every someone that does this weird thing where it like tries to check, like, oh, is there something else in focus? Yeah. So we'll do like the quick shift, and so because of that, I never liked it. Now with this camera, uh, with this camera, I mean, uh, I like for me, I was looking for, I wanted to check out the the, the art of focus more for like for vlogging, especially right, because many people are actually looking at this camera as as, a per as the perfect camera for vlogging because it's small. It's got you know the you can put the external uh, mic here. Also, it has the it's nice the, something that I loved on the GH4 is it has yeah. the flip out screen that goes like this, and you can do 180 degrees. So. So if you're vlogging, you basically see yourself perfectly, right? Right, so, so the autofocus was something comparable, for example, to some of the Canon cameras, like the 70, like, for example, yeah. then, you know, that was something to get ex excited about. Now, me using it, I was disappointed. I would still not, I, I don't think the autofocus is good enough on the, on the continuous autofocus that you would want to use it for vlogging. So uh, that was kind of the, the only, that was the downer <laughs> for me mm -hmm. on this camera. You, you now, was it better than the GH4, would you notice? Yeah, I mean, you, you, can, you can use it. And then uh, I think it's, you know, like basically you wanna, it's a touch screen here so you can focus on yourself at the beginning of the shot. And if you're not moving too much, then it's going to be fine. Like sometimes basically at the beginning of the shot, it like took a long time to, to fi find, you. find the face. Now it's also much better with the face. Uh, you know, like it's better at recognizing faces than, for example, I was doing these little uh, tests with toy trains and that was, it was really struggling to oh, follow okay. the, the train, right? But was, I, I, uh, I noticed- No, but you do yeah. have the touch, because it, the, you have the touch screen like in the GH4, so you can just touch and focus the area, right? Is, yeah, yeah, so basically you could do that and just you know, touch on yeah. yourself and then, it's, then it focuses. I, I just don't, in my, in my experience with this camera, I, I just don't have full confidence in it. So let, let's just conclude, I would say then, the f uh, out of focus is better than the GH4, but yeah. it's not amazing. <laughs> you don't want to rely it's on it. It's not amazing. But it does have another, I would say, good feature, that's a big feature over the GH4, right? Which is the, the ad more advanced camera stabilization, right? That's, yeah, I think yeah. that's the main story of this camera, I would say. Yeah. So, so I would actually say that, that that's, a, that's an advantage over the GH4 well, in, in terms of the, and the GH5, you know, we haven't tested it out yet, yeah. by the way, but it supposedly has the same image stabilization, right? So what do you think about this image stabilization? Yeah, I mean, it is. It works it, well? It, oh yeah, it works well, I think. And it's uh, definitely a huge improvement over the, because in the GH4, you know, or like most, you know, older DSLRs, you just have the, the lens stabilization, whereas this one has the in-body stabilization. So combined with the right lens yeah. for this camera, you're getting you know the five axes, right? Oh, okay, Which so is really nice. So first of all, I want to you know, you know uh, also I want to say that I agree that the image stabilization in this camera is very good. So I was I'm impressed. So it was like you know out of focus, not so much, but the image stabilization is very good. So and yeah, the main and then the the point is though you need to have the the right uh, you know lens because the stock lens. 
is you know obviously that will work with the this image stabilization. For example, we have this lens that's also very popular. Uh, uh, the Lumix. Lumix, the 2.8 yeah. lens, the 12 to 35, right? The, the very Lumix. Very good lens. Yeah, uh, Lumix G lens, right? Very lens, yeah. But the, the or original firmware of this lens, the lens does not support the du uh, dual image stabilization, but just have to, you just have to update the, the firmware mm -hmm. and then it's going to be supported. So there's actually, so not every Panasonic lens supports the dual IS. But I would say, I mean, if you get this lens on also or the other Lumix G lens, which, which is the longer lens, have, yeah, yeah, which is the the, the was 35 it, to 35 100, or something, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, millimeter. That one, amazing lens. Like those are pretty much my two lenses with my my kit, my GH4, like the, the 12 to 35 and 35 to to 100 Lumix G vario lenses, and I, you know, you cover all the pretty much focal lengths you need, and with this camera, they work beautifully, right? Yeah. Now, if you're going to get a GH5, get the stock lens too, because. Uh, we didn't get it, and it's only like a hundred dollar difference. Yeah, and if and you want to get it separate, then <laughs> it's five hundred dollars. Yeah. I don't know why they price it like that. It's kind of oh, you know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> make extra money. Doesn't make <laughs> much sense. Like usually, you don't see that much of a difference yeah. when you buy it, you know, separately. But uh, and that lens is pretty. It's not as fast as this one, but it's actually longer, so you might actually like it more than even this expensive lens. So I guess in conclusion, uh, we just wanted to say it's a it's a great all around camera, right? Yeah, um, for sure. You can use it for, for film work, you know, for professional video work, uh, all the way down to, you know, uh, vlogging even, maybe not the best AF, but it's it's decent. And also even home videos, right, or home photos, like it's a great stills camera. Yeah, we've, we've been traveling with it uh, in Ecuador and uh, again, I've got three small kids and, uh, and you know, and I did, I mm -hmm. did not mind, uh, you know, having this camera with me. Yeah. So it's uh, anyways. If you guys are looking for, I would say, one camera that you, you know, if you can only buy one camera, and you kind of want to have, be able to use it for different things. It's definitely something to look look out for. So the, the Panasonic Lumix G85. Uh, if you guys want to find out information about where to get this camera or some of the lenses and or you know, accessories and things like that, then we're going to provide the links for that uh, on our website, which is tomantosfilms.com, or you can you guys can just check the the links in the description of this video. Uh, anyways, I guess that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. See you.